So if you've been keeping up with these winter forecast videos, you probably already know that the most likely scenario is that we're going to be in a week La Nina phase by the time we approach the December to February months. And so what I did was pretty much take all the prior on week La Nina years and compared it to the long term average. And as you can see, here are the anomalies. We see that in the northern uh, Midwest as well as the Pacific Northwest, it is much colder than usual typically during a week. La Nina. We do see the anomalies drop off a little bit more further southward, as I will say that the temperature will more than likely fall closer to average right around the southwestern portion of the United States because the anomalies here aren't very strong, only hovering around one degree below average. And with the drought that's going on in this area, I think that this drought could offset the possibility of colder than average conditions that are typically associated with a weak La Nina, especially especially when you consider the fact that uh that the anomaly isn't very strong on um, this far south now um focusing our um our um attention a little bit further eastward we do see the scepters fall closer to average we do have a slight anomaly where it's slightly above average when it comes to scepter in the eastern united states more specifically the southeast so in this area i'd expect the scepters to be a little bit closer to average this winter which could play a big role in terms of the type of temperatures you will see on average this winter in a lot of these areas now we need to take a look at other factors as well before we can immediately jump into this conclusion because of course every week la nina year is different with different variables that could play a major role in terms of temperatures you experience but this is sort of the baseline of what you should see when it comes to temperature this winter but we're going to take a look at other variables as well that could potentially affect this average we see during week la nina years Another thing that's good to consider is the climatological models. Um, I'm using the MMME model, which is a computer model that combines a lot of the most reliable climatological models and combines them into one solution to potentially give the most accurate representation of the long-term temperature within the next few months. And as you can see, this is a three-month average between December, January, and February, with it, which is um, which are the main winter months and we see that this computer model is leaning towards the idea that much of the United States will experience temperatures warmer than average now I take I'll take this with a little bit more of a grain of salt because the com the climatological models over the past several years have been having a heavy bias towards warmer than average temperatures however this does go at least relatively in line to what we typically see during week La Nina years where the warmth is more so focused right around the southern United States while the northern United States is it typically experiences colder than average conditions but relative to the rest of the country when it comes to the temperature anomaly the anomalies are a lot weaker in northern United States which is a little bit more in line what we'd expect for a week La Nina year. So I do think that relatively speaking, the temperature anomaly in this map is fairly accurate. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be that much above average like this computer model is stating because like I said, there is a strong bias every year towards that. However, I am leaning towards the idea combined with the fact that we're in a week La Nina. That's going to be much warmer than normal in the southern United States. And I believe that will contribute to your average chapter being warmer than normal for much of the southern um, states um, this winter. And for the northern United States, like the Northeast and even the Great Lakes region, I wouldn't rule out that possibility either of it being warmer than average. Right now, I think it'll fall a little bit closer to average um, since a week La Nina typically does bring closer to average temperatures right around this area. And I also think the lack of a drought in this area should allow more chops and more jet stream dips to focus its um, its intent a little bit more towards the northeast as well as the Great Lakes, which I'll go into more detail with that in a second. So overall, I think this map is fairly accurately um, accurate, relatively speaking. Um, expect at least average or below average temperatures for the Pacific Northwest, much above average temperatures for the Southern United States, and uh, uh, at this point around average temperatures for the Northeast, but could also be slightly above average this winter. So now here's a look at the drought monitor throughout the United States and much of the most areas that are severely stricken from a drought are more towards the Midwest and 
that while the eastern half of the United States is experiencing less almost a non-existent drought since there have been quite a few storm systems that have moved through. Of course, the big elephant in the room for many of the southeast states is Hurricane Helene, with which, if anything, brought too much precipitation to many of these states. And I think that this drought could play a big role in terms of the type of conditions you see this winter throughout the United States because since there's going to be a drought over the Midwest, if this were to continue into the winter time, which I think there is a good possibility of that happening since droughts don't go away very easy but let's say if this were to continue into the winter time we of course know that with a drought comes more uh, um comes more warmer than average conditions because the uh, the ground heats up a lot more quickly when it's drier compared to more moist soil so that should allow temperatures to be warmer than average in much of these areas while for the eastern portion of the United States not only will um, the more moist um, soil will contribute to the temperatures potentially being cooler and so I think we'd be more vulnerable to jet stream dips right around the northeast which will contribute to colder than average conditions right over this area this winter so the average temperature should be colder than average right over or at least closer to average um even like a, even if the computer models are showing warmer than average temperatures right now because i do think that we're gonna see more jet stream dips with the lack of drought that's going on right over the northeast so here's my winter 2024 2025 average temperature forecast so right over the northern midwest this includes much of north dakota northern minnesota as well as portions of montana you should expect temperature your average chapter to hover around the single digits now keep in mind this is the average between the daytime highs and nighttime lows so it's not necessarily you're going to experience um single digit um temperatures as your average temperature every day in north dakota and northern minnesota that would be insane this is just the average temperature between the nighttime and the daytime which should hover around the single digits now this area is bigger than usual since it is expected to be a quarter the normal winter for much of the northern midwest so definitely expect those average temperatures to be colder than normal this winter where your average temperature should hover around the zero degree range and then just south of that you should expect your average daytime and nighttime temperature to hover around the teens this includes bigger cities like um, minneapolis as well as green bay wisconsin you should expect your average temperatures um to hover around the teens which again this is for a southward than usual thanks to the fact that it's going to be colder than normal in the northern midwest so definitely keep that in mind in a lot of those areas and definitely bundle up this winter because it's definitely going to feel much colder than normal and even these teen temperatures should um go more into the um, the interior portion of New England as well. So definitely keep that in mind in Maine as well as Andorondack. If you live right around the Andorondacks of upstate New York, just south of that, you should expect your temperatures to hover around the 20s for much of the winter time frame. This includes bigger cities like Boston, Cleveland, Detroit, Chicago, Des Moines, Iowa. You should expect your temperatures to hover around the 20s for the winter time, which is around average for most of these areas as as is going to be the portion where your temperatures will hover closer to average this winter. Um, so this isn't anything I'll say unordinary of um, from what you'd see during any given winter. So, but still, it's very cold. So definitely keep that in mind. And then just south of that you should expect your average temperatures to hover around the 30s now for some areas this is about average um for the winter time this includes cities like new york city and philadelphia and washington dc those temperatures are around average as i do expect the combination of a weak la nina and the lack of a drought that's going on over the northeast should have the temperatures hover around average um which would be different um, compared to what you typically expect, which is maybe slightly above average chapters during week La Nina's for Northeast. I do think that the lack of a drought will sort of offset that and bring a little bit more jet stream dips to this area. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, but for other areas, the 30 degree range is actually slightly above normal as this area is a little bit further northward um, than usual. So 
Um, in some areas, um, you could experience temperatures that are a little bit warmer than um, usual for the winter time. Now, just out that, you should expect temperatures hovering around the 40s. Now, again, um, in some er in a lot of these areas, it should be warmer than normal in the southeast, thanks to weak La Nina. So places like Atlanta, Dallas, Charlotte, um, as well as um, extending into Phoenix, you should and San Francisco, you should expect your average temperatures to hover around the 40s. Just south of that, you should expect your average temperature to hover around the 50s, and this is above average for many of these areas as well. Um, this includes Jacksonville, um, New Orleans, um, extending into Houston, and Los Angeles and San Diego as well. You should expect your average temperature this winter to hover around the 50s, which is close to to average but slightly above average in some areas and then just south of that you um into florida you should expect your average temperatures to hover around the 60s so this is my average temperature forecast for the winter of 2024 and 2025 if you want even more in detail forecasts regarding the average temperature you should see this winter make sure to comment down below your location and i'll make sure to give you guys more in detail outlook regarding the type of temperatures you should see this winter in your specific area but that's it for now, guys, and I thank you guys for watching.